justice for all. Could I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. And we have no awards and presentations. Public comment. Mr. Moskowitz, do we have any signed, signed up for public comment? No, we do not. Is there anyone in the audience who did not sign up for public comment that would like to make public comment at this time? Seeing none, electeds, do we have any comments today? No comments. All right, well, then we'll move on. Consent calendar, do I have a motion for the consent calendar? So moved. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. New business, county manager. Yes, good morning. We have six items this morning uh, for your consideration. Uh, the first two are pertaining to the uh, budget. Uh, the first one being our 2014 budget. It's a resolution authorizing a third supplemental appropriation uh, to the 2014 Adams County government budget. Uh, Brad um, Boswell is here as budget uh, director to talk through that. Can, can I just say something before you start, Brad? I am so happy to see you here. I am glad that you're here. You look absolutely wonderful today, and I'm just, it's just a pleasure to see you here after everything over the last year, and to have you here in front of us today is absolutely a pleasure. Brad Boswell, Budget Manager. First of all, may I say thank you for those kind words and, and uh, your shining smile, uh, Commissioner. Uh, I can't go into this much without getting emotional, so I won't. I'll just say, the words you guys gave me when I left for treatment helped me put my job aside and survive. That guy, as important as a role as you played, was even bigger. He came to my house to check on me. We were in contact regularly. Todd made enough of a difference for me to reluctantly lay my job aside knowing it's a, it was a terrible time to have cancer, if there is a good time, uh, and helped me to concentrate on that fight and, and live through it and survive. And today I have no cancer cells, uh, according to my last scan of my body. Awesome. So, yeah. Thank you, Todd. And it's gonna be a great Christmas. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I just hope I can read this. <laughs> Mr. Chairman and members of the board, you have before you a proposed resolution authorizing amended appropriations to the 2014 Adams County government budget in accordance with state statute and so that interested citizens have had opportunity to, for public comment and input due and proper notice of today's public hearing and the budget amendments proposed were published on December 4th in the North Glen Thornton Sentinel. For Adams County government on the third appropriation to the 2014 budget, Due and appropriations or expenditures are $6,904,753. Revenues, total of $7,608,753. And a brief rundown of the changes by fund are as follows. The general fund shows an increase of $1,445,000. Capital facilities fund, a decrease of $400,000. Golf Course Fund, an increase of $1.7 million. Social Services Fund, a decrease of $2 million. Developmentally Disabled Fund, a decrease of $1,000. Open Space Projects Fund, a increase of $70,604. Open Space Sales Tax Fund, a decrease, an offsetting decrease of $70,604. And then finally, Front Range Airport Fund, a decrease of $40,000. And that concludes the third amendment to the 2014 budget. <clears throat> okay. Do we have any questions? No, I don't. No questions. Do we have a motion? I move for the approval of a resolution authorizing the third supplemental appropriation to the 2014 Adams County government budget. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Um, our next item, and you can grab it here to talk to you about, is really the first presentation and reading of the 2015 budget um, resolution um, and uh, appropriate presentation that's going to be following. And this is really going to pertain to changes that you, you have seen from what the preliminary budget is to this current uh, proposed budget. So, Brad, I'll turn over to you and let you talk through that. Okay. 
Bradley Boswell, Budget Manager again. We have a brief presentation. This is a presentation that um, in one sense you've already seen. In another sense, this highlights some changes that we've talked about in study session since the preliminary budget. So on this screen we see changes to the 2015 preliminary budget, which was presented on October 14th of this year. We have the addition of three quarters of an FTE in the Sheriff's Office. That is the rounding up of two part-time positions to two full-time positions. And then we've added uh, one FTE in the coroner's office, that's an administrative assistant. And then also addition of 37,000 in public trustee budget. Uh, this is not an addition of 37,000 from the 2014 to the 2015. It's simply uh, they're wrapping up their budget submittal just after the preliminary was filed. So it's just a change since the preliminary. An addition of $100,000 for countywide website redevelopment. That's in our general fund in our administrative org cost center. Reduction of $850,000 for capital improvement projects moved to 2014. Specifically two items there, $450,000 for fitness center build out, $400,000 for the 120th pedestrian bridge. That's an open space project. Then reduction of $8 million for Section 108 housing project. This is CDBG funding moved via the Third Amendment. And then addition of $60,000 for maintenance projects at the Front Range Airport. And also, finally, reduction of $189,000 for the Little Dry Creek Creekside Drive project, and that's in our road and bridge fund. So those, that's a summary of some of the changes. On the next slide, this too you have seen. So we wanted to draw your attention to a couple things that have changed, just give you an update on our 20 funds. These are our 20 self-balancing funds that comprise the entire county budget. So the summary is, for the general fund, we have a 2.4% spend down budgeted. That is a cited GFOA best practice use of fund balance for those non-recurring one-time projects. <clears throat> also in the developmentally disabled fund, we have a small increase on a small scale, it's 10%. This is where revenues exceed expenditures and it's driven by a nominal increase in property tax for 2015. In the road and bridge fund, I wanted to point out a 37% decrease. This is just a use of fund balance for investment in infrastructure for those, those non-recurring one-time projects in the road and bridge fund. Finally, social services, we show a 9.1% decrease. So when we look at just comparing expenditures to revenues in the social services fund, we know that we have about a million dollar spend down, but I wanted to cite uh, we show a $10.5 million fund balance since we've deappropriated the $2 million interfund transfer originally budgeted in 2014. That 10.5 becomes 8.5, which is still a, a healthy fund balance. And then I would add a special note. When we think about that fund balance, $3.9 million is set aside for child welfare purposes only. That's a restriction applied by the state of Colorado. And that would give us a $4.6 million unassigned fund balance in our social services fund. And then I wanted to point out our four grant funds, which are CDBG, CSBG, Head Start, and Workforce Development. Those funds are all balanced expenditures to the grant revenue. And then one other notable change, our open space sales tax fund is decreasing by $4 million uh, due to transfers to municipalities for projects. It still leaves us $27 million in that fund. On our next slide, we take a look briefly at countywide revenues. Property tax shows when we compare the 2000 forecast to the 2015 proposed budget, a 1% increase. And that's very close to what we've anticipated. Sales tax, when we compare the forecast to the uh, 2015 proposed budget, it shows a nominal change. I won't point out though that from year to year since the economic downturn, we've seen about an 8 to 10 percent annual growth. We're budgeting 8.4 when comparing original 14 to proposed 15. So we're doing very well with sales tax. 
Social services shows virtually no change. We do have a change of practice I would cite at this time. We have removed the federal pass-through uh, numbers for expenditures and revenues. We were the only, only county of the large counties that actually booked that. So under Todd's leadership, we've taken that out and right-sized that budget. That is still uh, a large percent of the total county budget, but we have taken away $98 million, which are actually federal revenues and expenditures. Then uh, looking at specific ownership tax and highway users tax, virtually no change on those large re revenue line items. Uh, intergovernmental and grant funds, we show a decrease there, it's 39%. Due to the, the bulk of that is an $8 million change for CDBG Section 108. That project was removed from the 2015 budget and added by 30 minute to the 14 budget because it's a, 14, a 2014 project. Finally, transfers in, the last comment on this slide, we do show a decrease, it's 9.6%. Once again, this is um, principally related to the change in the 2014 Third Amendment for social services where we had originally budgeted a $2 million transfer from general fund to social services. That's been deappropriated. And so you see that in 15, that $2 million is not carried over. That's why you see that change. And I think I have enough voice left for two more slides. Our countywide view of 2015 exposed expenditures, proposed expenditures, we start off with personnel and we see a 4.2% increase. That is principally due to our pay plan. The pay plan is a 3% funded pool on a range of zero to five merit based. Then we'd look at O&M charges for services. We see a large increase. It's $11 million, 8.2%. This is, this is related largely and almost, almost entirely to an accounting practice enhancement, where in the Road and Bridge Fund, we had a number of uh, maintenance projects that were actually budgeted and booked as non-recurring capital projects. That has been changed so that they've been appropriately classified as O&M. And so you see that, that large increase. There's an equal and off, an opposite offset in our capital. So that is an accounting enhancement uh, under Todd's leadership. Government services, a 13.1% or $4.5 million increase. Um, this is ex almost exclusively the increase in share back of sales tax to our municipalities. So when we get the good news of increasing sales tax, we share it back a part of that with our cities and that expenditure goes up with the revenue proportionately. Debt service shows a million dollar decrease. We had a COP that matured at the end of 2014. So that loan payment falls away and we don't include it again in 2015. And that is exactly what's happened there. Then one special note on capital and O&M. You see a very large decrease. The forecast for 14 shows 75.7 million. Then we see only 30 million for the proposed 15 budget. What's happening there is the forecast is inclusive of all those projects in 2013 that we didn't quite finish. We roll those over on the First Amendment for the 14 budget, and then it spikes the budget in 14. That will happen again in 15, but the 15 budget right now does not include that impact because we don't yet have the First Amendment for 2015. When we do, you'll see that budget, that number will be increased. This is, this is a standard annual phenomenon that happens in our general fund historically. Um, next slide. FTE position changes. We, we looked at this briefly in our introductory slide. And I, you've seen this before, so I would just call your attention to the three bolded lines. And once again, coroner's office, one FTE added. Sheriff's office, two part-times rounded up to full-times. And that's one in patrol, one in admin services. And that gives us 9.75 new positions added in the, in the 2015 proposed budget. And I would add, we have four and a half deletions coming out in the 2015 budget. That gives us a net add of five and a quarter positions at a net cost of, and this is an estimate, $358,000 for the 2015 budget. Then finally, on the last slide, 
we just wanted to draw attention to key dates coming up, and of course that would simply be the 16th of this month where we will have um, the resolutions introduced and uh, read for public hearing and invite public comment. Also, the certification of mill levies will be brought to you on that date as well. And that concludes our presentation. Commissioners, do we have any questions? No. Nope. I do have one clarification. Can you go back to that second to the last slide? I'd be glad to. I, I just want you to clarify something because there was a, there's been some question, and I think we just it, Positions? Yes. When you read the budget estimate and you read the amounts, those are all inclusive. That's the base Absolutely. plus benefits. Mm -hmm. Could you just explain that so that we have a clear picture of what sure. that means? So these, these, you see the last column and it says budget estimate with dollar signs. That is a gross number, so it includes the, the actual salary and then any applicable benefits. And we make assumptions for positions not filled. Uh, to, to derive the uh, benefit cost. So those are the trued up or gross amounts. Okay. Not just salary. So they basically include like health insurance. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Any other questions? Nope. None. Do we need a motion on this today? No motion on no, this today, right? Um, this is actually just the first reading just of this. Uh, reading. You'll be uh, taking action next uh, the, on the 16th. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Um, Item number three um, is a resolution to accept a bid from Andrus Construction Incorporated, DBA Colorado Infrastructure Construction Incorporated for the Brandner Gulch repairs uh, for the Neighborhood Services Department. Liz Estrada with uh, purchasing is here to talk to you then. Good morning. Adams County owns and maintains Brantner Gulch, which bisects the Riverdale Dunes Golf Course and the Regional Park and Fairgrounds. This sex segment of the Brantner Gulch is a concrete line ditch from Riverdale Road just north of East 128th Avenue to Park Boulevard just north of Henderson Road. Um, on September 12th of 2013, floodwaters overtoppled the crest of the gulch, compromising the integrity of the channel in such a way that approximately 578 linear feet of concrete line channel will have to be reconstructed. Adams County will seek reimbursement for the percentage of cost allowed through FEMA when the project is completed. There is also other additional work that needs to be done on the bridge that is on the golf course side. Bids were open on November 20th of this year. We did um, conduct the process according to our purchasing rules and regulations. And after verifying the bid price, the Transportation Department confirmed that Andrus Construction is the lowest and responsible bidder. And um, it, they have also deemed that the price is considered fair and reasonable and within budget. So the recommendation from both departments is to award the project to Andrus Construction in the amount of, got that wrong, $276,045. Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions? No, sir. No questions. Do we have a motion? Yes, I move to accept a bid from Andreas Construction, Inc., DBA, Colorado Infrastructure Construction, Inc., for the Ratner Gulch repairs for the Neighborhood Service Department. I need a second. Oh, second, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Henry? I was yes. waiting for the amount. <laughs> Commissioner Tedesco? <laughs> yes. It's not there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right, uh, you, item, <laughs> item uh, four is... Uh, a uh, resolution to accept a bid from Lane Heavy Civil Incorporated for the lift station number one improvement project for the Parks and Open Space Department. And Liz is here to talk through that as well. The improvements to the upstream lift station number one will be will result in the rehabilitation of the site to current design standards and will also match the configuration and operation of the existing downstream lift station, which is number two. The project included demolition of existing station and constructing a new one, modifying the manhole structure, installing several hundred linear feet of piping and replacing valves, along with other electrical um, modifications and also to the vault. Bids were open on, on November the 6th of this year and we received four bids. We did follow our purchasing policy and procedures to, for the bidding process. After verifying the bid prices submitted, the Parks and Open Space Department confirmed that Lane Heavy Civil is the lowest responsive and responsible bidder and recommend awarding the project to Lane Heavy Civil in the amount of $569,073. 
Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions? Nope. No questions. Do we have a motion? I move to accept a bid from Lane Heavy Civil Inc. for the lift station number one improvement projects for the parks and open space departments. Thank you. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Okay. Um, our fifth item this morning is resolution accepting a bid and awarding an agreement to Sanity Solutions Incorporated to provide a, a compellent storage area network and Bethany Bonacera with purchasing is here to talk through that. Okay, thank you. Adams County has a need for a new Dell Compellent SC8000 storage area network system that will be used at the Government Center for all production environments, including Oracle, SQL, Exchange, and Active Directory databases and virtual machine hosts. The existing Compellent SC40's enclosures and disks have reached 83% of usage, and the support for the Compellent storage area network will end soon. When the support ends, the hardware, will, the hardware will have reached its end of life. However, the existing SC40 will be available for use for the county disaster recovery at the disaster recovery site. A formal invitation for bid was posted on Rocky Mountain e-purchasing system. Bids were open on November 4, 2014 to consider providers for the compellent storage area network. Sanity Solutions Incorporated was the only provider that submitted a bid in the amount of $388,682.72. After conducting a market analysis with neighboring counties, the price was deemed fair and reasonable. The recommendation is to award an agreement to Sanity Solutions for the compellent storage area network upgrade in the not to exceed amount of $388,682.72. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? No. Nope. No questions. Do we have a motion? I move to accept a bid and awarding an agreement to Sanity Solutions, Inc. to provide a complaint, 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 storage area network. Thank Second. You. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Our last item uh, this morning is a resolution to award a request for proposal to Colorado Frame for the auto body repair <laughs> service. And uh, Jen Tierney with purchasing is here to talk through that. Good morning. Uh, Adams County, the Adams County Fleet Department currently contracts with a firm to provide on call auto body repair services for a fleet of approximately 260 cars and light trucks that occasionally need body repair. Proposals were opened on September 4th, 2014 to consider contractors to provide on-call body repair services for the fleet. The county received proposals from three contractors. The evaluation was based on five components, pricing, references, experience, and the overall proposal. After a thorough evaluation by the committee, it was found that Colorado Frame was the most qualified proposer. The recommendation is that the RFP award go to Colorado frame based on the best of value to the county. The approximate spend per year for this agreement is $108,000. Okay, do we have questions? I have a question. <laughs> yeah, I think my question is the same as your question. So. Right, yeah. why does it, did you say 108,000 yet the resolution says? 105. 105,000. Does it say 105? So I would. Uh, Which is 108 we, or 105? Okay, so, so what I would say at this time is that we table this until we can Sorry. get this resolution fixed, okay? Is that okay? That's, that's fine. We'll pull okay, it. we'll table this for right. right now. Thank yeah. you. Thank Sorry. you. Okay. We are in recess for seven minutes, and then we will resume with land use hearings. <coughs> <coughs> 